I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. We are at the library outside in the woods. We are promoting our free loose living program that we're doing this winter. And it's all about getting outside, enjoying nature, communing with nature. It's actually a Norwegian concept and um, it's just all about being out there, the breathing, um, yeah, in the fresh air. Uh, and in order to get you out there, we've got some ideas for you. Um, we are going to be spotlighting and highlighting the Ledgeview Nature Center, which they rent snowshoes and skis. You can go out on the trails there. Um, there's also some trails locally, and Renee at the Kiwanis uh, Prairie. Well, the Kiwanis Park has a very nice trail through it, and then the Kiwanis Prairie, and then the Rhinic Woods, of course. And then there's Solomon's Trail, which connects to Holstein and Kiel. Just some really great trails in the area um, that actually I discovered when COVID first happened. So it is, they're beautiful, beautiful treasures here in the Nolstein area. We also have snow. So there is sledding <laughs> right here in New Holstein. And ice skating. And we have ice skating over in Kiwanis Park. That's no, now- Oh, Civic Park. Oh, Civic, Civic Park, sorry, Park. Civic Park. <laughs> and it's open now. So, you know, just get some skates and come on over. Or just, even if you don't have skates, slide around on your boots. How much fun can you have? We have some um, books here too at the library. And this one is Nature's Silent Message. And we also have The Lost Art of Reading Nature's Signs. We have a really cute um, kids book. It's The Woods. And I know you were talking about this. Um, they're inside. It kind of gives you some ideas of what yep. to look for when you're out hiking. Um, From um, trails to uh, animal tracks in the snow leaves, anything that you can find and it helps you to identify it at a kid's level. And then we also have um, 35 festive family activities to make the season bright. And, and it does go through spring. Yeah, okay, it do. does go through spring. Yep. So I mean, there are some really cool different little things that you can do with your family. I mean, there's cooking inside, but then there's also um, getting out there and giving you ideas on what to do as a family out in the snow or out in the cold. So. Um, we also have these, more. Oh, go ahead. So, yeah, we have more books available as well. Those are just a couple that we wanted to show you. Um, and then the photo contest. Oh yes, yes, yes. We are having a winter photo contest, and it's really exciting because the winners are going to have their um, their pictures printed on canvas, and then they will be hung up and featured in the library. So um, there are so many amazing things to take pictures of out in winter. We've got like beautiful frost on the trees right now. Um, snow, ice, um, animal wildlife. There are so many great things to just get out there and see and really like step out of the box and just enjoy what God has provided. Uh, and winter. Winter yeah. is just beautiful in it Wisconsin. Is. It's gorgeous. <laughs> so yes. Call us, t call us today if you're interested in the books. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm here this week with Doug Schneider from New Holstein Utilities. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome, Doug. Not a problem, thank you for having me, Dee. How was my hair this morning, pretty good? <laughs> looks great, looks great. All right, great, 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 great. Yours is nice as well. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I did. I haven't washed it for a couple of days. <laughs> um, no, yet yeah, we're camera ready. I do, I make a lot of jokes that I'd rather this be a radio show, but you know, you can come see me in person. So, um, yeah, so we did, so we talked last week when we were kind of setting up this interview and it's so funny because you're so passionate about water and your job that I feel like we could go a dozen ways here. Um, and yeah. so I would, I, I kind of want to start with the personal questions that I normally ask, and then we'll get into, normally I start with your organization, but I think, I think we're going to go on some tangents with that. So I'd li I'd like to start with the personal questions and um, tell me how you ended up in this area. A um, little bit. Um, I grew up over by Kiel, um, outside of Kiel to the east. Um, my grandparents actually are from the Holstein. Uh, my dad actually grew up in the Holstein. My mom on her side is from St. Anne, so we're all kind of in the area. Um, and 
more or less, I got into the plumbing program um, in high school, or actually in eighth grade. I wanted to become a plumber already, uh, so I decided that in eighth grade, and then worked through high school, and I got a job working for uh, Ditter Plumbing in town here, uh, fresh out of high school. Got my apprenticeship, uh, worked for him for a number of years, and then worked for some other plumbers in the area after that. And uh, this uh, job opportunity popped up, and basically. Here I am, uh, eight years into it, and uh, I'm uh, running the water wastewater side of things here at the utilities. So, okay, so yeah. wastewater is your specialty then? Uh, not no, no. I wouldn't say wastewater isn't my specialty. It's uh, I, I would call I have a whole pocket pocket full of uh, everything: uh, water, wastewater, plumbing, uh, cross connections, uh, inspections, all that stuff. So I, I have. I'm not just specific in one one aspect of things. So. I see. I see. Uh, yeah. I mean, I have one of those jobs too, where like you have to become the jack of all trades. It doesn't matter what your title is. You're dozens of things. So, okay. So cool. So born and raised in the area. What are your favorite things um, to do? It. Let's let's stick with New Holstein. What what is something favorite about New Holstein? Sure. Um, basically, the the one thing that uh, I really enjoy is the the water park, the aquatic center. Um, my wife and kids come here uh, most times during the summer. You know, we're trying to get into there and have a good time in the water park. We go to the parks. We also do. Uh, my son and I. Uh, he really likes the little pond over by the community center. Um, we do a lot of fishing out there during the summer as well. So that's cool. Cool. Our little, little tidbits. We're we're outside family we like doing things yeah. outdoors that's what we're all about so yeah what a great city for it really i mean yeah exactly. tends to be a common uh common theme among uh residents here everybody that i talk to really loves all of the outdoor stuff that's available so i mean and myself included we are also outdoors people for sure yeah, yeah um and i usually ask because we are a library what is your favorite book yeah my favorite book, you know, my, my daughter is very into reading, uh, but I will tell you this, my, I'm not, I'm not a big reader. I'll <laughs> front with that. Uh, my, my first book though, uh, is written by Gary Paulson, The Hatchet. That, I that love book. that. Do um, you know that he like tried those things in his backyard to make sure that they were like realistic enough to put in his book? Yeah, yeah, I, I did read a little bit about that as well because he's made other books, but that was that was my 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 favorite book out of it uh, mm -hmm. of all. I guess I could say. And then my second book, I actually have it here. One second. Oh, well, your first choice is fantastic, Doug. So I mean, I'm... this is my second book, Wisconsin <laughs> Plumbing Code Administration. So. <laughs> Oh, so like, if I want to go to sleep, I would read that book. No, I'm teasing. You that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's my that's my second book. But yeah, yeah. That, no. no, that's a, that's a great one. I think when we were talking the other day, um, it I got the feeling that maybe you're a big um, codes, and I don't even know what the word is. So those would be, I suppose, codes. Sure. Yeah, code advocate. I would call myself. You know, I, <laughs> like following the rules. Doug the rules Schneider. Sure. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm all yeah. about that. Sure. Hundred oh, percent. Well, tell me about that. So, what is it specifically that like makes you that? Why would you define yourself as a code advocate? Yeah. Uh, basically, um, the reason why I say that is is basically. When I, I, I have my master plumber's license and when I receive that or when I actually receive my plumbing apprenticeship, part of our, you could say, oath of becoming a plumber is your sole job is to basically protect the public um, from being, getting sick from water contamination or, or the environment itself from pollution or drainage that's inappropriate, that's not being treated. So that's basically my my sole intention is to uh, protect the health and well-being of the public. That's what it states in the in the code book, 
um, of, of what our job is. Uh, so I take that to heart, and that's why, um, you know, through the utilities, uh, we're doing a lot of cross-connection program. That was my main objective when, when I started here is the cross-connection program um, to, to keep on following through with that to make sure that um, all of our cross-connections in town are addressed taken care of and, and maintained and, and kept going. Um, not that some people are deciding to change things after we leave the door or vice versa. So there, there's a whole reason for it. It's not that we're coming down to crack down on you and spend have you spend money or get a plumber involved or something like that. It's, it's basically solely to protect the water and yourself uh, from getting sick, you know. Yeah. That that I think is so powerful because that's something I I would have never really thought of. I think I think maybe in America we really take it for granted, especially I think in Wisconsin or the Midwest where we have a lot of freshwater sources. Um, we don't really yeah. think about where our water comes from, so we take for granted that we just like live with safe, clean water all the time. And you you're suggesting. I mean, this is because of these codes and because we're going and making sure that it's safe all the time. It's not like it just magically exists as. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, there's, you know, in the United States, there's a lot of, we're, we're in an awesome, awesome location. Wisconsin is a great place because of our natural resources that we have. We have the Great Lakes. We have multiple multitudes of water. Mm -hmm. We should never really realistically run out of water. You got Arizona and California that are always having droughts that are, you know, having, uh, uh, they have to be concerned about consuming water and, and that sorts. Um, where we don't, but what we want to do as a, a community, as a city, as a state, is keep our water clean as possible. And that, that is basically uh, leading down to the treatment plant, but it also comes Starting from the tap, you know, where it comes out of the ground, we want to make sure it's clean coming out of the ground. We want to make sure it's clean getting to your house. We want to make sure when it's out of your tap going down the drain that there is another contaminant going in it as well because water is actually recycled. Um, if you can imagine that, it's coming out of your tap, going down your toilet, going to the treatment plant, and then it actually goes back into the ground and it's just a, a full circle. It's a, it's a big cycle. I don't know if everybody realizes that or not, but the cleaner we have that water putting it back into the ground, the cleaner it is going to be coming back out of the ground. It's just yeah. a, a natural occurring, you know. So. Can, you brought up something. So my three, I have a th three-year-old. And um, when she, I don't know what it was that we stimulated this conversation with her, but when we'd pull the uh, plug in the bathtub, she'd say, where's the water going? And so we'd say, well, the water is going back to the city and they're going to clean it up for us. And then it's going to come back out of your tap. And so now yeah. she talks about that um, to the point that like, if her toys are in there, she'll say, oh, we have to get them out because I don't want the city to take my toys. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, no, 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 it's not that. It's a good thing that they're cleaning the water and it's coming back. So my three-year-old knows knows that, that the water has that cycle, but I, I think I'm still uneducated about like how that actually works. Right, right, right. So you, you want to um, get a little explanation out of that more or less is basically um, when when water leaves, say your residence in, in, in town, it's gonna uh, flow down sewer mains. Well, actually, I should say it comes out of your house in a sewer main, it gets to a main horizontal that co collects all of everybody else's residence, um, and we call that the sewer main. Um, mm -hmm. And that flows, and it's it's all integral uh, piping that makes its way down to a treatment plant. Um, when it gets to the treatment plant, there's there's a processes down there as well, and the whole thing specific. And and mind you, if anybody ever wants to take a tour down there, or show you know basically have a walkthrough down there, you're more than welcome to. Just give us a call. We'll walk you through and we'll actually give you a visual of what's going on down there. It's really not, we got to get everybody out of the mindset that the treatment plant is a really dirty place and it's it stinks and all this other stuff. It does not. Part of the process of cleaning water is is it's actually awesome. It, it's fairly clean. Um, there's some obviously gross parts to it, but a lot of it is a, is a clean process that you're trying to make it as clean as possible, sending it out to where we do. Getting back to where I was 
stating though, so once the water enters the treatment plant, what it's doing is it's actually going through our headworks building. And what that does is we have a, a screen, a screw screen, and what that screen does is it, it, it has fine holes in it and the water flows into it and it's catching any large debris. Um, that can be, bear with me, but it, it can be a lot of feminine products that are flushed down the toilet that should not be flushed mm. down. Um, a lot of flushable wipes we catch in there as well, mm. um, you know, which are not good as well. They don't break down. They, they, right. they, they're on the package, they do, but they do not. The only thing you're flushing down the toilet is what's coming out of you and basically toilet paper. That, mm -hmm. Those are the those are the couple things that we should be flushing. Uh, Gosh, but anyway, can I ask? Yeah. Oh, I know this is a tangent, and I'm so sorry, but this is oh. what happens when we talk. Um, so I know in a lot of other countries, um, they don't flush toilet paper down the toilet. So, like our toilet paper, is it just that our systems can handle it, or yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. maybe we can talk about well, that. Way. That's just yeah. an interesting well, part of the process for me. I was so surprised to learn in other places, you don't yeah. put toilet paper in the toilet. Right, right. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the plumbing itself, the pipe oh, okay. side, um, the drainage, um, okay. also the invade. Um, that our systems are designed, uh, getting back to the code again here, <laughs> our forest father. <laughs> Um, did a really great job, except, especially in the state of Wisconsin, on on actually coming up with a great code to make water or manipulate water when it goes down a pipe to make it scour, to make it churn, and to break things apart. Um, maybe in some other countries, I don't know a lot of other countries' plumbing code, or if they have code, or uh, they don't have. But, lacking uh, codes would be my guess. Lack, yeah, exactly. They they're they're uh, they're they're plumbing doesn't uh, have the opportunity maybe to break things down like ours does. Um, okay. But yeah, um, paper, and, and maybe it's the process that we do our paper as well, is that we allow it to break down. Um, but okay. either way, that's, that's more or less the, the, the knowledge that I have of that, I guess. Um, sure. But, okay. I'm so sorry. So you so, have this screen that it's going yeah, through. And, and, and the water filters through that screen, and that's catching any large debris that's coming down the sewers. And then we catch that, presses it, puts it in a barrel, and we can put it in the dumpster to get rid of it. Um, after that screen um, is our grip pump. So our, our, our infrastructure is not new by no means. Utilities was established in 1912, um, and from 1912 to roughly I want to say the uh, 70s was the, the big boom of the whole scene. That was the major growth. Okay, so mm -hmm. we had, you know, roughly, we'll, we'll call it 50 to 60 years of, of major growth. Um, and then from 70 till today, present 2021, there hasn't been a lot of growth um, in, the, in, the, in the utilities. So a lot of our infrastructure is, is aged, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's old. If you can imagine that, it put it in in reality that way. But what happens is we're having a lot of uh, infiltration coming in through our our sewers. Um, so that means groundwater, some some of it seeping in, but also pipes are breaking down, and there's a gravel and grit just coming into the sewers as well from around the pipe, and it flows down to the treatment plant. So, and every treatment plant has this; they have a grit pump, and what that does is it collects all the gravel. Um, and, and fine rocks, and what that does is it drops it into a pit, and there's a big pump in the bottom that sucks out that, that grit and gravel out of the bottom and then puts that into a dumpster as well. So that's, wow. yeah, helping our, our system in the plant so we don't have that gravel and grit flowing through. Um, so fine screen, grit pump, and then out of that grit pump, it flows to our lift station. So we have everything that comes from town goes into this one main lift station at the treatment plant. What that does is that there's large pumps in there and they pump it up and out and get it up to our aeration basin, which is higher than ground elevation. Um, and what that does is it gets into that aeration basin and, and that's part of the treatment process. So now we have water that is, we call raw, it's dirty. Um, and what, what happens is it gets into these huge basins and they make a circle shape. And in those basins, air is uh, introduced into the 
into that sewage water and what happens is there's uh, bacteria in there and it helps break it down. Uh, it, the mm -hmm. bugs in there start eating and growing and, and breaking down any materials that they can eat and digest. And what happens is you have uh, basically settling going out and then you have clear water on top and you have some floors on top as well. So the middle is the cleanest part. But anyways, uh, we that that is part of the treatment process, process that goes to the makes like a moon shape, gets to the back of the aeration basin, drops in another pipe, and that goes into our clarifier. Our clarifier, um, at that point, we introduce a chemical, um, and what that does is it actually uh, helps remove phosphorus out of the water. So uh, phosphorus is not good for the environment. That's a major thing that the DNR are trying to do right now. And mm -hmm. our, our limit for phosphorus right now is 1.0, and we are, are 0.10, I should say, and we are down to uh, below 0 0.75, which is great um, by introducing this chemical. Um, and also what, what happens is uh, that that chemical is introduced, gets into the uh, clarifier, and in the clarifier, uh, what happens is the, the solids separate. The water, the clear water stays on top and the solids settle to the bottom, and we have sludge pumps or ras pumps that pull that sludge off the bottom. And we can either put it back in the aeration basin, or we can actually add bugs back in, mm -hmm. or we can take that sludge and put it up to our digester, and then we let that uh, we thicken that, and basically that's what we haul it on the farmers' fields in the fall. Oh. Um, or, um, but also, so that clear water in the in the clarifier is uh, it allowed to settle out, and uh, basically it goes over some weirs um, that help aerate it once more. And then it uh, goes to our trough, and it goes out to the creek, and that's the clean water. Um, so it, it it takes a process. It takes some time for that water. If you were to dump a cup of water in the headworks building, and you were able to track it all the way through, it would it would take at, at least 24 hours to get through. Um, mm. the size of everything down there, but that's part of the treatment process. Yeah. And, uh, Part of our process down there too is doing a lot of testing. We have to test the raw water, which we call the water coming into the plant, and we have to also test the water going out to the creek um, to make sure that we're in the parameters of the DNR, what they set for our uh, our standards, basically of you know uh, uh, product that's in the in the water coming in and and basically how clean it is going out. And it is clean. They, they say you're supposed to. There's a lot of operators in the state of Wisconsin, not not this guy that's sitting here, but there is operators in the state of Wisconsin that will drink, take a swig of, of water out of the house. <laughs> proving that it's trying, clean. Proving that it's clean, but I'm I'm not yeah, it's it's good stuff. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so like now knowing that process as well, I guess I, again, is like an uneducated consumer of water. I mean, we're, that's every single one of us is a consumer of this product. So what, right. like we bought a, a home five years ago and knowing nothing about um, how we are connected to the bigger system, are there things that now that you've been on your side of it that you would want like every consumer to know? I am you know, services that you offer or um, things that they should know about their own systems at home, things that they can do to be better consumers. I, you've mentioned a couple already and I think we get those letters a lot where it's like, don't flush things that aren't, yeah, like feminine hygiene products don't flush. Uh, those flushable wipes are not flushable. Um, what are other things you think consumers should should know? Yeah, um, yeah. There's there's a there's a lot, but the wastewater side of things, yes. Uh, basically, um, a lot of lot of plastic products and things like that do not flush. You know, basically, we're trying to collect it at the treatment plant as best as we can. Um, but we're not there 24/7, and if a piece of equipment fails, that that product that you're flushing down the toilet will make it through our plant and potentially in the in the stream. And um, and that's not just uh, I should say physical products, but gases, oils, all that stuff that isn't good for our our treatment plant either. You know, uh, engine oils, stuff like that. Don't dump dump that that down the drain. Um, because uh, eventually that makes it to the stream, and then that's killing our aquatic life. Basically, our stream we dump in the Jordan Creek, 
and that flows basically all the way to the Manitowoc River and makes it to Lake Michigan. So mm -hmm. we're wanting to keep that water pure. I mean, there's people around here that go fishing for trout in Lake Michigan and wherever else, or in streams around here. So the cleaner we have that water going out of our plant, the better our aquatic life will be. Um, but also on the water end of things, um, you know, things to be aware of as a consumer as well. Um, you know, how you're hooking up things in your home is a, is a major, major thing. Um, cross connections is basically my forte. Um, I'm a huge advocate of it because. Explain hook, cross connections. I don't quite understand that. Is that where you, you, you meet the city? Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Cross connections are, are, uh, actions or devices that, uh, basically somebody can either hook up or, uh, what can happen on the water side of things in a home that could cause potential for cross contamination of drinking water that could say siphon water out of the toilet, um, siphon water back into the home through a garden hose, um, multiple mm. things, bathtubs, uh, being able to have soapy water going back up into the plumbing as well. Um, basically a, a cross connection is, is a device that can, have a potential to to contaminate the drinking water, more or less. Is that mm. that's what this connection is. Um, so basically, what we're trying to do on the water side is prevent that from happening. Um, and people say, well, I mean, a cross connection. Yeah. Say your garden hose is laying outside, and you don't have a vacuum breaker on it or any type of backflow device. Um, what can happen is, say you're watering the lawn and everybody likes to do this in spring or summer is get that weed and feed bottle from the hardware store or any store and start spraying down your lawn and say all of a sudden, for whatever reason, either the fire department hooks on the hydrant and starts sucking too hard and potentially causes a negative pressure in our system and that water in that garden hose can flow backwards and get sucked up into the house into the main and then what happens is it can actually not just affect your house but it could affect your neighbor's house the the block who knows you know how ex how extreme it can get you know that and is the same compelling. yeah <laughs> i didn't it's know not, that was possible right oh yeah for sure and and then i shouldn't even say the fire department but it could even be <laughs> us and we have a water main break um and all of a sudden it's just a huge break and that can actually make a negative pressure in the system as well because you may have water flowing to that break trying to get out of that hole in the pipe and it's causing a negative pressure when it's screaming past somebody's house and it could suck anything back into the system. So there's there's a lot of potentials. You know, are they going to happen? Is it going to be a hundred years, you know, and never have a problem? For sure. But it's right. a one that that all of a sudden something could happen and, and it could cause a, a huge huge outbreak in, in town, you know, so that, that's what we're trying to prevent if we can. Right. And so um, do you guys go up because so like I said, we bought a home and then somebody from our utilities came through and then said that we had to replace our, some a couple of like garden hose things and they just did it and charged us for it um, mm -hmm. and they were just like really simple cheap parts but we specifically had to have them is that what yep. you're talking about like that vacuum yep yep, yep. vacuum breakers uh, there's ASSC so funny. related to those so I can rattle off numbers left and right um, an ASSC 1011 would be on your vacuum breaker hose bib outside um, another another a uh, major um, backflow uh, device is actually a handheld shower. Um, if you have a handheld shower in your master bath hooked up to your shower up high and um, you have a bathtub below, you don't have to have a bathtub below, but if you have a bathtub, sometimes what happens is, uh, you know, you, you got little kids or it could be grown adults as well, fill up the bathtub and it's full of soapy water you know, from taking a bath and you got the handheld down there and you're rinsing yourself off or whatever and you lay that handheld in the tub and something happens in the plumbing system in your house or even in the system out in the street, what can happen is that can siphon that water out of the tub right up that hose and then into the system. So then all of a sudden you have soapy, suddy water that you're trying to consume out of your out of your refrigerator. You know what I mean? If you right. have a dispenser refrigerator or 
you know, out of your tap in the, in the kitchen. Who knows, you know? Yeah, without doing it and without seeing how the sausage is made, so to speak, I think I just like, I, I don't think that I'm unlike other consumers in just believing that it's all independent of one another and not recognizing all of the interconnectedness of the water systems in our home. So this, yeah. I knew I'd learn even, I mean, we talked the other day and I was just learning one thing after another. So this is really interesting to me. Yeah, if, if you think about it um, in a grand scheme of things is your house isn't, the, the water in your house isn't actually just in your house. It's it's mm -hmm. a whole city. So the Holstein's city is the house. You could kind of imagine that because mm -hmm. that water is all in there. So um, there is potential you know, for everybody to to inter, intermingle with water. If there were if there were big cross connections that everybody's thinking that a faucet you turn it on, water's coming out. So there's got to be pressure pushing everything out and getting to the faucet. Well, there's there's a lot of potential out there that it could potentially be negative and be going flowing backwards. So. Yeah, just the just the knowledge that there's so much in I love the metaphor of like the city being that like the house thing. It's not your house isn't an island in this, that we as a community are all entirely reliant upon one another, which is why that code yeah. book <laughs> that yeah. you keep yeah. Yes. Yeah. it's tattered yeah. because of a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. um Exactly, and and getting back to the plumbing as well, um, and that's why we have plumbing codes. Um, I when I I have my master plumber's license. It's it's also I mean, on the utility side of things. Um, we as employees don't uh, do any of that plumbing per se on the drain stuff of things, but that plumbing code has a huge effect on on everything as well because. If you're plumbing at home incorrectly on the drain side of things, you could cause huge problems as well in your house, especially um, sewer gas, H2S. That is a huge, huge potential that could happen um, if, your plumb, if your house is plumbed incorrectly. That's why, you know, we have plumbing inspectors, and that's why um, it's great to use those resources. Um, it's not just, it's not a money maker thing, in my opinion. It's its a protecting thing um, because- You've convinced me through these arguments. I mean, I'm not saying I was a person who didn't, but like when I go to like get a permit for building or when I know that I have to have an inspector and it's a little nerve wracking and you think like, what? I don't, I think you just don't fully understand the importance of it. Like it's my house, leave me alone, yeah. let me live. And here yeah. you are why, explaining it's not your house; it's everyone's why, well. Why do you need to tell me how to how to plumb my house? Because I have water coming out of the tap and it's going down the drain. What's the big deal? You know, right? Uh, a lot of people are under that understanding or thinking that hey, you know, it's yeah. You just want the the city or the utilities just wants to make money off of me because you know uh, we have to pull these permits to do this work. I'm just going to go around it. I'm going to do it on a weekend and it's going to be right. done and yeah, right. We'll be good. You know. And and I'll be honest with you. Some of the, sometimes it is okay. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes yeah, it's going to be plumbed in just right. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of instances where I I visually see stuff and it's like, boy, that is not not even close to being right. And and mm -hmm. you can cause a lot of problems down the road or or right away. And the worst part is, is okay, you're paying good money for uh, products that you installed in your house. Um, you know, PVC, uh, just fittings in general, and all of a sudden it's installed wrong, and then all of a sudden it fails down the road, and now you're paying for it again. Where right. you know, if, if you have, do the proper channels, it works out really well for you if, if you just follow step by step, and you do it once, one and done. That's my main main objective is, you know, it, it's a great thing just to, to follow through and and, and do it correctly the first time. I, I don't like rework. You know, that's my main, main thing. Absolutely. I, we, we had discussed, I mean, similar philosophies with like, you know, you put a little bit of investment in 
to something, for example, a better water softener or not even better, a water softener that addresses the water that you are actually using in your home. So the, cor the correct specifications um, can prevent you from having to change out fixtures later that will cost you money, things like that. So uh, it's weighing that return on investment, 12 extra dollars a month or $150 parts repeatedly. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, softeners wise as, as well, you know, um, uh, that that's something that the utility provides, you know, as a service that we, uh, you know, will install a softener for you, um, and then we just have a monthly rate fee that we charge or whatever for the installation of it. But yeah, you're exactly right on putting the right piece of equipment in for the right application, you know, <laughs> and that's, that's also a huge advocate. Um, softeners are a great thing, um, in my opinion. Um, they're going to save your water heater. They're going to save your plumbing fixtures, toilets, sinks. It's going to save you not only just the the material, the products, but it's also going to save you as well um, down the road um, cleaning products. You mm -hmm. know, you, you scrub your toilet day in and day out every day. You might be able to stretch it out to, you know, once a week or something like that because of the hard water stains in it or something of that sort. I mean, we talked about right down to not just staining, but like the damage that it does to these, like you have this nice Kohler toilet that then has like etching on the porcelain, there's like a ridge from yeah. your water. Right, right. Yeah, and it, it, exactly. And, and to, to elaborate on that as well, if, if it's existing, um, sorry, softeners aren't going to remove that hard water scale that there but you know if you are making the investment on a new toilet and you have a softener that is not working uh, or it is working it's gonna it's gonna save you that product uh, it's gonna it's gonna keep it clean and you're not gonna get that scaling going on or the holes in the rim uh, for the flushing um, and a lot of people aren't aware of that as well on, on a toilet bowl there's actually holes underneath the rim all the way around and that helps that scouring action that gives that circle motion when you the toilet um, so you know with the water softener that even keeps those holes from new again uh, if it's existing it's going to keep that toilet working flawlessly um, but as soon as you have some scale build up uh, from hard water if the softener isn't working such as not adding salt or something of that sort, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to slowly build up in time and then the, that that device isn't going to work as well as it was brand new, you know, so, yeah. um, you know, it's so a little tidbits like that, you know. Absolutely. I mean, you came in here and looked at our system here at the library and I didn't know that it was only addressing what uh, it was cold, hot water, hot water. It was only addressing hot water, not cold yeah. water. And so that's every fixture. I mean, you know, we're using cold water in the toilets and the sinks and the everything. And I had always wondered kind of why we still got some of that scale and staining. And right. even though yeah. I was like, well, we have a water softener. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Because it was right. only addressing one thing. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. And the, and the, that's the, the flaw with having it hooked up to only hot water as well. It's going to save, the softener is going to save your water heater. But mm -hmm. Part is is it, it's not gonna um, save your faucets, aerators, stuff like that because uh, see your bathroom sinks they're mixing hot and cold water, so your aerators are still gonna get plugged tight with hard deposits because that water is being mixed coming out. You know, granted the hot is soft, but the hard water or the cold is actually hard water, so it, it's mixing and you still get all that scaling and and uh, things deposited on those aerators. So. I can't tell you how, I mean, I think we were fixing the urinal twice a year. And now I feel like once we had that conversation, I was just like, I think that was the problem all along yep. that we yep. just weren't addressing that part of it. So, yeah, that's interesting. So if, so if you can save, you know, if you're spending, you know, our, our residential unit softener in town for a, a residential home is roughly, you know, uh, around nine dollars a month something like that mm -hmm. um you know and if you can make that cost pay that fee or whatever that nine dollars a month and instead of paying a hundred some dollars for a plumbing fixture every 
you know, two years or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that'll that save you in the long haul, you know, realistically, mm-hmm. you know, and just even your plumbing in general, the pipes and everything. So Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You don't, you don't have to convince me. Uh, would that be, <laughs> um, you know, just to be respectful of your time here, um, I would like to wrap it up, but I wonder if you have like one of your like hottest tips that you would leave us with or best suggestions to the consumer, I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate two, basically. My, okay. my first, my first advocate that I'm going to really push for is stay away from those flushable wipes. Be mindful of what you're putting in the toilet. Realistically, I mean, you're going to help help save on on the environment, and you're also going to help save on costs down at the treatment plant. I mean, realistically, things break because there's products that are jamming things up down there that, that don't need to be. Um, and then secondly is cross connections. Uh, we do do cross connections at every resident every eight years um, when we change your water meter out. We're doing the process of changing water meters out right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're getting into residences to change out water meters and when we're there, we're gonna do a cross connection inspection. We're not there to uh, invade your privacy or to nitpick anything. We're, we're here to check out the plumbing and protect you basically as, mm-hmm. as a public. Um, and once you have those devices installed, leave them in there. That'd be great because we're <laughs> going to be back years and we're going to have you put it back on. And if you leave it on, you're going to help yourself and it's going to help the environment and and, and help from having future problems. Um, yeah. I, I, my main thing is I don't want to have to go to, um, you know, a, a, a big, uh, basically a uh, news, news conference saying, hey, the Holston Utilities um, has a major water outbreak because of a cross-connection contamination. Mm-hmm. Want that. If we can help it, we're going to prevent it. Um, you know, so it, it, it really starts out at the consumer and then, you know, goes from there. So, um, yeah. But appreciate everybody that is doing it. And and if if you view this and say, hey, you know, I do have that vacuum breaker sitting on the shelf over there. Maybe I should put it back on the hose bib. Do it. That'd be great. You know, yeah. then, then we come, I'm, I'm going to give you a thumbs up and be like, nice job. We don't need to come back anymore. You guys got everything uh, as is and it looks great. You know, so yeah, I like those calls too. I, I, I love those tips. I feel like I, I still, I mean, I'm understanding so much more and yet Th- that would still be like Russian to me. You saying like you see this, va- I wouldn't know. I would have no clue. I purchased yeah. a home and didn't realize that they were off. So yeah. that is one of those things. Like, could say somebody moves in is brand new in oh. the community? Can they give you guys a call and check? Oh, that'd be awesome. I love those calls beforehand. Um, cool. I don't want to come at the eleventh hour and say, hey. We're here to change your water meter out. Let's do a cross connection inspection, and then we're gonna we're gonna ding you on saying, oh, you got to put three vacuum breakers on, and we, we'll be back in a month and make sure you got them on, you know, or mm-hmm. give us a you have them on. I would I would be that'd be awesome if a homeowner advocate be like, hey, I'm just purchasing a house in the Holstein Utilities or in the, in the Holstein City, and I'm gonna hook up to utilities and is there anything that I need to be worried about or do you want to come over and take a look at my house and look over things cross connections wise we're more than willing to do that I am a total advocate of that and uh, and that just shows me that people would be really uh, advantageous of you know protecting the water you know and, mm-hmm. and have clean safe drinking water out of it so mm-hmm. yeah I'm I love that. that okay that, that's great and I think we'll just have to put a, a little note in the welcome bag that you get when you come to town the library has theirs in there and the utilities one can just say you know give doug a call he'll he'll pop yeah. out right away sure right right That'd be <laughs> problem. he'll be like the new holstein welcome committee <laughs> yeah perfect yep yep <laughs> that sounds still great. Up my face but hey I'll, I'll still be smiling so it's all right <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with me this morning and for your time. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. I really appreciate you having me on and I look forward to
seeing everybody else in the community and uh, we'll go from there for sure. Awesome. Sounds great, Doug. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Check it in, check it out. I'm going down to the line. Shh.